on In Touch this week, Rachel Colisi joins us after her husband was announced as the Springbok captain for the June incoming series. We get the lowdown from her on what life has been like, how much it has changed, and all the other amazing projects she's busy with in her own right. We also chat to someone who's going to be bringing you that broadcast from Washington, D.C. this weekend as the Springboks play their first big match of the year. And Super Brew predictions from our most successful super sport colleague in our Super Brew pool over the last week. This is In Touch. Stay with us. We're coming to you live from our studios in Randberg. Use the hashtag SSRugby if you are streaming us on Twitter and send us your questions for Rachel. Maybe there's something you'd like to know or a comment on Facebook and uh, make sure you send those through so we can include you in the show. Since we are live, you might as well join the conversation. There's a lot of rugby on the menu for you this weekend besides, of course, that big Springbok match because there's some important rugby also being played in the Northern Hemisphere. Montpellier plays Castro. That's the French top four team final and also the reason for example why Dwayne Vermeulen and Franz Stein haven't joined the Springboks just yet. Now the South African sides might be done with Super Rugby but over there in the Antipodes the Australians and the Kiwis are playing a few derbies of their own, a South, a South, South Island derby between the Highlanders and the Hurricanes, like an early Friday morning coffee and biscuit rugby and then on Saturday Blues Rebels, nice Australian and uh, Kiwi uh, combo there, Chiefs Crusaders and the Reds hosting the Waratahs on Saturday just before lunchtime. We've also got one match on Sunday just because you know the weekend uh, offers you that much rugby. The Brumbies hosting the Sun Wolves. You can tune in at 8 a.m. It's a big opportunity this weekend as well for the SA Blitzbox side. Uh, they have an opportunity to get ahead on that overall HSBC 7 Series log. They're four points behind Fiji at the moment. Day one also getting underway on Saturday. Make sure that you tune in for that live and exclusive on Supersport. Now, if you are playing Super, Super Brew, I hope your season is going better uh, than mine. And, woo, mine's been tanking quite a bit. So we have a competition for you to participate in. If you are playing Super Brew, uh, enter on uh, the website there. And if you're a Vodacom Red client, you can win an exclusive LG Q6 smartphone every week. Go play that score prediction game. We have our own pool here. All of us at Supersport are playing together. And over the last week, Gavin Cowley beat everyone. The total of 8.5. We're good going there from him. We've got four people tied second. Masumbalele, Jukwa, Banner Swanepoel, Mots and Mar Kubota, Joel Stransky also not doing badly. He's had that yellow cap once or twice over the last season. I hope for your sake, as I said, that it's going well. Kevin Cowley gave us his predictions for this round of Super Rugby fixtures before the June break. So if you haven't made your picks yet, take note of these. Round 16 in this year's uh, Super Brew requires a little bit of a gamble, I think. So uh, I've actually gone with three victories for teams playing away from home the War the canes the crusaders and the waratahs and overall i reckon the canes will beat the highlanders by eight the uh, blues will beat the rebels blues playing at home of course by 12. the crusaders to beat the chiefs by three and that's one where things could go hopelessly wrong and uh, the waratahs to win by nine against the reds and the last game of the day then is the Brumbies up against the Sun Wolves. And I've gone with the home team on this occasion with a victory by 16 points. I'm Gavin Carley for Super Brew. Thank you, Gavin Cowley, for Super Brew. Uh, thank you so much to Gavin. Hopefully, it's a good uh, weekend for him as well as for you. Speaking of good weekends, uh, Salman Murat captained the SA Under-20 rugby side last night. And uh, it's a big weekend for them as they go into their second match this weekend. If you didn't watch last night, they had a pretty close encounter with Georgia. They had us all sweating. Uh, they suffered uh, the loss of a prop towards the end of that game uh, due to a yellow card, but they managed to pull it through 30 327 in the end. Uh, those are all the captains over there in Papignan in France for the under 20 uh, champions, uh, championship. Um, of course, quite a lot of strength there for, for the blitz box in players that are playing their second tour tournament, Salman Murat being one of them. Uh, there's a really funny clip that's uh, surfaced over the last week, and maybe you haven't seen it. But even if you have, I'm pretty sure you're excited about seeing it again because it just shows you that these guys really are 19 years old. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 you boss to me. You boss to me. Yeah, but you. Hi, I'm Sadi Sandy, and I play prop for the Chafuljit. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Tyron Green, I play for the Genius Spoon Box. Yo! <laughs> Hi, I'm Salva Amirat and I play Lock for the Genius Spoon Box. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm PJ Stenkamp and I play Flanker for Junior Box. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sichlin Zula, play wing for the Junior Spring Box. Cute man. So we're very excited about this uh, junior championship and the hope uh, that we have pinned on them. Uh, they've won their first game. They need to win five if they want to win the title. They've got another two pool matches coming your way over the next week and both of those will be live on Supersport. On Sunday uh, in the afternoon, you can actually tune in for quite a bit of under 20 rugby. South Africa play Ireland at 20 past four. You can tune in for that on Supersport 5 and on Supersport 7, New Zealand, Wales, Scotland, Argentina on one. And uh, they play the final fixture pool match against France next week Wednesday the home side and they are going to need all of our support since they are up against the hosts and if you are perhaps on Wednesday not going to be able to watch that game in front of your TV the good news is you can now watch DSTV anytime anywhere quite literally you can watch live TV you can check the TV guide uh, catch up and you can even schedule a recording if you can't watch at that uh, exact moment just uh, DSTV now is the app you need to download it basically puts your PVR in your pocket. Showmax is also now available to you if you're a DSTV Premium subscriber and uh, you can stream a series and all of the, the products that are available on your phone, on your uh, tablet or on any computer. And if you think that Showmax is only about series, I've got news for you. We've been working on a very special rugby pro project for you. It was the best of times. Rugby header, It was the worst of times. Red five, that is a dreadful blow. The England crowd booing their team. It was a spring of hope. He's turned, five, jump kicks. England have won for only the third time in South Africa. It was the winter of despair. Highs and lows, guts and glory. The story of the Springboks war with the Roses. Coming soon to Showmax. And w once you're all psyched up for that war with the roses, make sure that you tune in uh, this weekend. Of course, the international season gets underway with an all-important fixture against Wales. Coming to you live from Washington, D.C. Tune in at 10 p.m. on Saturday night for that. And then from next week, we have three tests being played here in South Africa. If you don't have tickets to go watch that live in the stadium, then you have a front row seat thanks to Supersport on uh, the 9th, the 16th and the 23rd of June against Eddie Jones's England side and one person who will definitely be there in the stands supporting and cheering for the Springboks. I, I love uh, referring to her in my head as the mother of the nation, even though I know she's not the mother of the nation, but maybe of the Springbok nation now. <laughs> Rachel Khaleesi, thank you so much for joining us. It's lucky to have you. Yeah, it's so good. Everyone's very excited I hear on Facebook about the fact that, you, that you're hanging out with us here at Supersport today. You have a very young baby girl, I uh, so I appreciate the fact that you've flown up all the way from Cape Town. It must have been a pretty big week. Yeah, massive. It's so exciting and um, my son, obviously Nick, uh, everyone knows him very well. So he's so excited. Uh, I dropped him off at school the other day and one of the girls came up to him and said, congratulations, Nick, you're the Springbok captain. And he was very confused. He was like, I think it's Tata. <laughs> so sweet. So it's, it's even made its way to Nick's little preschool. Yeah. Yeah, from top to bottom, from massive. top to bottom. Yeah. But uh, but you say that someone did hit on you in the lobby, so everyone doesn't know that that, that you go with with the Springbok captain just yet. <laughs> no, hopefully that's never the case. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so being Mrs. Khaleesi this week, with him being uh, an, an announced as the Springbok captain for the June series, you have known Sia for a very long time. Yeah. You must probably be one of the proudest people out there at the moment. Yeah, I'm so proud of him, really. I'm just what he's done and how he's, um, where he's come from and what he's achieved in such a actually short amount of time. Mm. It's just massive and I'm so proud of him. And how old were you when you met? 
think I was 22. Uh, 22, he was 21. Yeah, it was just before you went to the bush. And um, yeah, we met in Stellenbosch with mutual friends and yeah, became very good friends. <laughs> very good friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what is it that, that you think that people don't know about Sia? Because he's a relatively public personality. He's closed off his social media account. So I know you said this week that people need to know that the, the Sia Khaleesi that people are following on Twitter at the moment isn't yeah. him. Yeah. That's the obvious stuff. But the stuff behind the scenes that we don't know? Do you know, there's, there's so many things. I always think, oh, if someone asks me what they don't know about Sia, I'm going to tell them it's this. And I just, when someone asks me, I just can't think of like, anything on the spot um, but probably that you know he looks so aggressive on the field but at home he's like an absolute softy he cooks quite well uh, he changes nappies as well which is very good which is refreshing yeah so <laughs> lots of people are shocked by that one but yeah he's the he's, he's quite hands-on yeah yeah and you guys have um, his sister and his brother also living in your household and mm. um, I'm sure they must be bursting with pride so proud so when Sia told me on Sunday, because he found out on Sunday, I, I was so excited and I told him, I was like, you need to phone your dad and tell your dad and stuff. He's like, you can't tell anyone, like you need to be quiet about it. So I was like, oh, okay. Um, but I told Liema, his brother, because Pelo and Nick knew, so I felt like he needed to know as well, because he's at hostel in PE. And um, he was so proud. It was like the sweetest, sweetest moment. And he sent Sia a message and Sia sent it to me as well. It was the sweetest message. And I'm just, it's so exciting that they can be a part of it and you know, that they're old enough to understand what's going on. Yeah. So it's, it's I was going to say, I think that's a nice thing for Nick. It's just dad is doing something cool somewhere out there. He asks me every day, he says, Mama, is dad still captain? Is dad still captain of the Springboks today? <laughs> Yesterday. Yes, still today. But <laughs> now he's still. Yeah. Okay, so um, what do you do? What did you do by profession because I know that you you took a bit of a break from work when Nick came along yeah so um, I was when I met Sia I was um, working for a company um, doing network marketing and um, I was managing the office in Cape Town and great career ahead of me and yeah just within a year space of a year we obviously had three kids and uh, <laughs> that was pretty hectic and overwhelming and with Sia's traveling schedule um, I stopped uh, to take care of the kids and that was about a year and then I picked up work again um, working at a B&B &B. and then um, yeah just recently uh, having to just stop again because it's just gotten so hectic having another baby um, so yeah now I'm just uh, trying to get involved in things that are really on my heart that I think is important and um, yeah, it's making me very, um, it's just fulfilling for me, which is, which is so good. So. so you have four kids under, and you're under 30 of which two are not your own, but you're raising them as your own. That's a lot of pressure, yeah. along with all of the public pressure, along with the fact that Sia does a very high pressure job. Yeah. Any tips on handling a lot of pressure? <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's so important just to stay really grounded and um, to keep things very real at home. So. When we're outside of the house, like, yeah, it can get a bit, like, overwhelming and hectic and stuff. But once we're back at home, we just, you know, it's very normal and very real and uh, very real. Very real. <laughs> Nappy real. Yeah. <laughs> Nappy, screaming kids, it's bedtime, shower time. Mm. Very real. <laughs> you are very generous with how much of your life you share on social media. And that mm. comes, it uh, brings its own complications. Mm. And you've recently really started using your own platform for the sake of other people, which is something I know that Sia's also been talking about. Yeah. And um, he's also very, um, he's told me before that he's worked hard to try and also create an appreciation with Nick yeah. about the, the, you know, being fortunate enough to have what he has. Um, tell me about this project and where it came along, the Zeku Flay project. Yeah, so um, someone contacted me on social media, one of the teachers, a grade one teacher, and she just said that um, she just wanted her grade ones to be able to go to um, a butterfly world, just on an excursion, because the majority of those kids, it's in Lotus River, um, and the majority of those kids have never been out of that environment. And Lotus River is one of the most dangerous environments um, in Cape Town areas, and lots of gangs and gang shootings. And so to be a child and to have never seen anything beyond that is just sad. Mm. So I was like, this is crazy, like Butterfly World would be the easiest thing to get organized. And so I went to the school to see what else, you know, I could maybe do for them and help them with. And just the need was so great for so many different things. And I posted on social media, honestly, thinking like a couple of people might want to like help out and stuff. And, and two of my main things was setting up their library for them and um, getting a contact container sponsored and um, just what came from it was just massive and so many people wanted to get involved and um, 
It was just so special to see. I just think with social media, like I do have a bit of a following on social media and just, um, I think it's so important to be using those platforms for better. And I mean, there's so much need in the world. Like, I just think a lot of it is wasted on social. There's a lot of rubbish on social media these days when I think it could be used for so much more. Mm. So, yeah. so this is what you do in between raising four kids relatively, you know, giving them a pretty balanced life. You know, just quickly changing the world one, one signature <laughs> container at a time. How can people get in touch with you if they see what you're doing and they go, you know what, I want to get in touch with Rachel Khaleesi. And yeah, all social media is just like the main, main sort of way. My email's um, available on there as well. So yeah, just social media I just think is such a powerful tool. And um, yeah, so if anyone wants to help out. The Soccer World Cup is starting soon. I know that Sia is a bit of a, a football fan and you guys often have a bunch of people over to watch football during the week as well. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing there's going to be much of that happening despite the June series being all rugby. Um, yeah. yeah, no, massive amounts of soccer going on in our house and he's such a Cristiano Ronaldo fan, so he's definitely going to be rooting for Portugal. Who does he support generally? Liverpool. Liverpool. Okay. L Liverpool, mm. yeah, so he's, uh, he's obsessed with them. Yeah. To the point that I've seen him in tears. In tears? Yeah, about Liverpool. So one time, first time was at my wedding, and the second time was uh, was football. a Liverpool situation. <laughs> wow, shame. It's real being a, a rugby wife and a, and a football wife at home in any way. Yeah. Um, we are bringing you some really excellent uh, football content as we build up to the FIFA World Cup. We've got that uh, channel going already to, to psych you up, and if you haven't seen it yet, tune to a two one three. This is what you can look out to for. For a football fan, the World Cup is the ultimate. Billions are watching. One great game, it can change their lives. We want to do our best. Catch every game of the FIFA World Cup live and in HD on your World of Champions. And that's what uh, we have in store for you, the 2018 FIFA World Cup taking place, of course, in Russia. Gets underway on the 14th of July. Uh, a full month of football action coming to you live and exclusive on Supersport. And thank you so much, uh, Rachel, for, for joining us on the show. It was lovely to have you uh, in studio with us. If you've learned anything from Sia over all these years, what do you think it would be? I I think just um, his character is just so special and he literally wears his heart on his sleeve and I think that a lot of people these days are so guarded and so afraid to open up um, themselves and to just allow people to, to get a sight of who they are and Sia, Sia is very good at that and you know, he's just a, a beautiful human being with a beautiful heart. Generosity certainly is something that you both have in common. Yeah. And well done on all the work that you do in your own right and the example that you are to everyone out there. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful story of love and uh, passionate South Africans really making a difference with whatever they do. Uh, speaking of passionate South Africans making a difference, there is a South African who played rugby for the US and he now works as a commentator in the US. His name is Dallin Stanford. He went to school in Cape Town and you might recognize his voice from the Sevens World Series because he often commentates in, uh, on tournaments in the US and of course also in Canada. You will be hearing more of his voice on Saturday night when the Springboks face Wales in Washington DC and we asked him to send us uh, some info you know, the, the lowdown on exactly what conditions will be like in Washington, D.C. That's us here on In Touch for this week. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Use that hashtag SSRugby. Tell us what you'd like to see on the show. Over to Dallin. This weekend, we're ready for the Robert F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium, RFK Stadium, to host. Uh, it is an older stadium, but the conditions look, look pretty good underfoot. Three kilometers east of the Capitol building. The weather, though, could be pretty tricky. 25 degrees Celsius 
uh, with thunderstorms and a lot of rain predicted, humidity of 75% will play into that slippery ball as well. But overall, we're hoping for about 20,000 fans to come through and support and hopefully a Springbok victory. We'll see you then. Cheers now.